the Royals and Hunter Dozier agreeing to a contract extension. Four years, $25 million, or with an option, five years, $35 million. Dozier is a former first-round pick, but he's had just one good year. Is this a good move for the club or the player? Let's do a little digging in. Hunter Dozier is going into his age 29 season. Because he debuted relatively late, the Royals could just use his club control years right up to the age of 31 and let him walk. On the by and large, a player's best years are in his 20s. It's not a bad guiding principle to let the players leave when they hit their 30s. Just let them go. They become more expensive. They've got free agent leverage, and they've passed their prime. But the Royals are anteing up to get one or possibly two free agent seasons from Dozier. That's ages 32 and 33. The reason to do that is the promise he showed in 2019. Dozier finally broke out. A 348 on base, 522 slugging percentage. That's a 123 weighted runs created plus. That's a good hitting season. His war was 3.2. That's just about all-star level. What would have really helped him was another good year to back it up. He did not do that, however. He tested positive for COVID. He missed time. And we all know the season was very strange. You can't get too caught up in it. But it really would have helped Hunter Dozier. His fielding is league average at first, just below league average in right field. And he's expected to return to third base this year, where he has struggled defensively. For a big man, he's 6'4", 220. He does have speed. His sprint speed is in the 77th percentile. And last year, he was a plus base runner for the first time in his career. So there's some good and not so great in the mix. His exit velocity jumped from in 2019 to 91 miles per hour. That's good for 27th in baseball. And his chase rate has dropped each of the last two years. But he's not some stat cast darling where he's always crushing the ball and just needs to stay healthy. As I mentioned, he can run, but he's not an all around star. He needs to hit to be a good player. But here's the key point. If this were, say, the mid 1980s, the Royals could offer an extension based on what a baseball salary was at the time. The league minimum, by the way, 1985, $60,000 a year. So maybe Dozier makes 150 grand. I'm just throwing out a number. That was better than the average working person in the United States, but nothing compared to what it is now. What he will now get paid is enormously higher as compared to the American cost of living. Modest baseball money is now a whole lot of money in the real world. So it makes sense for the Royals to do this. And some might look back and say, Hunter Dozier could have made more than the $9 million a year. He should have waited. But again, in the real world, Hunter Dozier in the United States is going to make $9 million for a single year. That's real money in the real world. And take a look at some recent contract extensions in the same range. I'm a fan of these deals because as a GM, it's worth the risk. And the player, while possibly leaving money on the table in the future, is actually getting real money guaranteed now. It's not a huge percentage of the payroll. And look at the caliber of player we're talking about. The Royals already did this with Whit Merrifield. Indians did it with Michael Brantley, Jose Ramirez, Dodgers with Max Muncy. All these guys are very good players. And Jose Ramirez is a superstar. Hunter Dozier has a lot to prove. I hope he proves it and both sides can be happy with this deal. Now, you might be asking, what if the player doesn't become a star? How bad is it for the club? Take a look at some deals where the player extended didn't blossom, or maybe the jury's still out. I'm not saying these guys didn't work out, but again, you be the judge. Start off with Jason Kipnis. He's had some good years already by the time he signed his extension. He didn't become the star that many thought he would, but the Indians got some value. Rugnet Odor for the Rangers, not so much. Gregory Polanco, still time on that deal for the Pirates. I really believed in Alan Craig. Did not work out for the Cardinals. Cameron Mabin, had a good years, actually came up later after the Padres had given up on him. But missing on a player to the tune of five to seven million dollars a year, that's not crippling to your club. It's a small part of your payroll. And I've always believed in the current system, if a player can start for you four to six years, I mean just start for you, it's worth the contract extension. 